I am unashamed. What about you? We're, you we're going. Have, you could be blown up over, you know, about four or five times as big, and then I'm sitting over in the corner, a little bit. You know, say, the, the so, second order. Is, it, so for it, our <laughs> listeners, what we're discussing is these people behind the invisible wall, yeah. which means there is actually no wall. They're just sitting. The right fourth over. wall. The fourth. They wall, they get everybody in focus, but when they do, there's like giant. They turn us into giants when yeah. in the process. So I think yeah. we should have at any time, if they think any one of us are getting the big head, yeah. we can call it <laughs> big head, yeah. big head, uh, what would we call that? You what begin that? to shrink. Huh? The big yeah, heads yeah. begin to shrink. They they become they have to become. I lesser. wonder if they could do the other way, though, and make you like a little miniature, like a little well, bitty Phil small said, Phil said, hey, cameraman, I look like I weigh 350 pounds, and Jace looks like he weighs 105. <laughs> so, yeah, that Let's cam don't shot talk was... about weight. Yeah. So. It was I, a strange looking, I don't know how you even do that, but I mean. That, that, yeah. I, that's why we're over here. So I went on an adventure. I would like to share with you if you're, are you in the adventure spirit. Another adventure? So I've been filming for weeks for our upcoming show that has not been announced yet that I can't discuss. So <laughs> it's during, the worst kept secret in America. <laughs> during the, they call them dark weeks. And I dark um, weeks. I asked them to change that, and they said, "What?" I said, "Why do you label it dark week?" I was like, "That just sounds sinister." It sounds sinister. That's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. And uh, they just they had no comment. So anyway, for the dark week, I went. <laughs> I got invited by these uh, these guys that make build the metal detectors. Garrett, I've been with them for a few years, and they said we're going to Virginia. I mean, we're talking about the birthplace of America here. There's and I went last year, found a few things, but was just overwhelmed by the beauty and just the history. And so they're going back this year, and he's and I'm like, the more I talk to him, my guy there, he's like. Well, there's a few places I've never gotten permission to, but they duck hunt. And I'm thinking, if I tell them that you're coming, they may say, yeah, come find our treasures. What do you think? I said, go for it. I'm in on this. <laughs> I like undiscovered territory, places you haven't been. They've been hunted a lot, but just not by him. So he got two of them where they were, somebody was a duck hunter in the bunch, and they're like, yeah. Come on. Is that in and around the James River? Yes. That's where, because back, you got to remember back in the day. I hunted with some guy up there. It, the rivers were the interstates. So this is where people yeah. gathered, where they hung out, where like during wars and the, like the Civil War, those entry points on the river, bridges and oh, places yeah. like that, ferries. And this, this is where all the commotion was. And so... If you have an old home place that used to be somewhere on the river, well, there's, there's, and, and this stuff go, we're going back to the late 1600s and 1700s. I mean, you may find something as old as you can find here made of metal. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, so I'm in. And I just wanted to scout because if this show is successful, you know, I was thinking more, hey, season two, let's go, to, let's go to the James River and, so, but you kind of got to know the lay of the land, have the people there. And so I, I was looking. So we went, we met the first uh, folks and duck hunters. I gave them duck calls. And I found a few things. Uh, I, I brought some of my findings here, but I found a, an old watch there. And yeah, just keep it yeah like that so they all don't slap. See what I'm saying? Look, Phil. Yep. Yeah, keep it flat. All right. <laughs> and, I need to help redesign my box. I don't handle treasure that much. Yeah. So I got a couple large cents in there, and you say, you know, used to the penny was huge. It's it's crazy that they lost it, but I got one that was eighteen twenty four, and one was eighteen fifty, and I found a couple Indian heads. And so here you go. Let me see. And he gave me a Virginia half penny, which is this one in the middle. We'll we'll get a shot for it. But look, this thing in the corner is what I want to talk about. This is a is a uh, something for a padlock, and it's got a crown on it, and has initials. Well, I can't even see that. G R, I 
think it was Georgius Rex, and it was made in London from a lock from the late teens, the late 1700s. That's when the Brits so, maybe control some or. Well, some, I just somebody got a lock from there, and I found the little the little piece to it, and some of those buttons. Uh, you know, they go back to 1830s and 1840s. So uh, it was, it was great. Might have been some dude that the that the uh, the, the guys from Virginia there, the, the rednecks in there around that river, might have clipped somebody, <laughs> dragged them off in the weeds. Well, who knows? Said, look, you got a lock, a lock on him. Yeah, take you get it off of. <laughs> yeah. So look. So the second day we go <laughs> the rednecks. And so, look, there's like seven of us. I mean, just rough-looking guy. I mean, I was obviously looked the roughest, but seven guys. So we pull up to this old home place, and uh, the son was a duck hunter. But the son, he was he was older than me. So his mom still lived at the house. She was 85 years old. And uh, so we gather up. So we're like, hey, we introduce ourselves. We appreciate you letting us hunt. And she's like, well, you have to come in before you can go hunt and I have to give you a tour and we have to drink some coffee. This is what we do here. <laughs> so everybody was looking around. I was like, all right, boys, we're going on the tour. So we go in there. Well, then I quickly found out that this woman was a, a woman of faith. And was her name Granny Hawkins? Yes? No, it wasn't Granny Hawkins. Okay. Uh, she was Miss Helen, but she okay. said, uh, she she basically first she showed us she had a had a thing she had built of course the place was full of history and that was all interesting but what got my attention was the first display was this display her daughter had done with and it was Jesus rocks of various assortments and design and that she had a verse there uh, what's the verse that says if you don't praise something to the faith you don't praise God the rocks will cry out it was in in oh, Matthew yeah. yeah. Which would have been really the first rock concert. No, it was a bad joke, but <laughs> if the rocks are crying out. But y'all remember that verse. So yeah, I thought, yeah, well, yeah. this is interesting, you know. And then she just, I, I, I realized this woman is trying, she's using this. She, she believes the Lord has sent these seven people, and she's fixed to share her faith and the love of God. And she did it. She was very witty, sharp as a tack about history and but she just found ways to share different aspects of faith and and the love of god and look she had a there was this white dress on the wall it was a she called it a baptismal dress i, I guess just for ladies only but she had a history in her family going back to the late 1700s from everybody who was baptized I mean, I, I mean, like that is pretty cool. You, you just went through it and the dates that it happened, and so the more I got around her, I mean, I was, I felt, I thought, well, this is the treasure. I mean, th I'm glad I came in here, you know. No doubt about it. So then we were like, okay, the tour's over, and she's like, well, I have to read you a story, so y'all have a seat and sip on your coffee. <laughs> and she read us about a ten minute, very inspirational story about a young girl who used to call back in the day you could call information and it was something information please and but it wasn't like today what we you know when you ask uh what's the alexa yeah this, the back in the day they had alexa but it was actually a woman named alexa <laughs> who would say can i help you so this she read this story about this three i think it started when she was three or four years old she picked up the phone, said information, please, and she asked uh, how to spell fix, I think, was the first first thing she asked. But she just kept calling this woman. Any idea she had, any question, as she was growing. And uh, so eventually she quit calling, but then she thought about her like 15 years later, and she called back, same woman, still there, hey, how you doing? And... Well, then she called, and there was a guy, and in, in information, please, was no longer in service, but she had written a letter before she died, the woman who was the informant. And she said, if this girl ever calls again, read her this letter. And so, of course, and then the uh, Miss Helen got, got real teary-eyed, and it basically, the letter was that this woman couldn't have kids, 
and this little girl calling, she just took it upon herself to try to teach her and mentor her about life. And I mean, there was way more substance and spirituality to some of the things. I mean, this was, this was like, it's probably a 15 minute reading. (laughs) Yeah. And I just looked around and thought all these old rough guys were inspired, got teary eyed because she was getting teary eyed. And plus just the transition from time. And she made the point that it's about relationships, you know, no matter how, technology has evolved because back then that was a big thing you can call and get whatever information you want whatsoever the only time we ever saw alexa stumble is i asked dan (laughs) to ask alexa do you duck hunt do you hunt ducks and there was a a good question it was a pause and then the answer coming forth from the internet was I'm not sure. <laughs> so, oh, honey, you'd be sure if you did it or not. Come on out with it. So anyway, so it was a it was a great. So I was like, no matter what we find here, I'm inspired, and it was great. So and it was a big place they had. So everybody tore out of there. But we after the first hour, I think everybody. Realized, Why would everybody tear out of there? I'm talking about looking for stuff. Oh, it's, I got it, you. Thousands of acres here. I was talking. And, I thought they, they were, there was some, some meanness in the no, crowd. No, no, no. They were tearing out <laughs> like, you know, like well, the they, whole crowd, you know. They were inspired. And, they were but, inspired. But they came there yeah. to to metal detect and treasure hunt. So it's like they were like just pinned up. You know, they've gone yeah. on a two-hour tour, and it, so they just mm-hmm. took off. So at first hour, I had found nothing. And I, did, I can't even see anybody else. They just all took off in every direction. And so I found a large scent, and I went in a 100-yard radius and didn't even get another s- signal. But I was happy then once I found that because those are hard. Why to find. are you there, Jace? One of the uh, uh, deficits in, in our culture these days is that we don't associate to our shame. We don't associate old age with wisdom and and uh, that's a good point. Right thinking. We 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 don't we don't we don't bring in the older people. What they would say. We need to bring them forth. Well, you know what what made me want to which wanna, is uh, interesting. Wanna tell the, yeah, want to tell this story is because we're in you know First Corinthians twelve. And we're talking about the different talents and the and the members were different parts to the body. Yep. I mean, here's a woman who's eighty five. You'd think she'd be looking at well, she's retired. And, no, she she's working for the Lord vigorously. Yep. She was witty. She was very wise. She was very clever and extremely classy. Just everything about her was amazing. And and I thought, this is, it's been a while since, because usually I'm the one doing the confronting or trying to figure out a way to let God use me to inspire other people. But I was like, this is so awesome that this woman has figured out a way. If you show up out there, get ready. But she did it. <laughs> she disarmed us in with all the knowledge of her history because she knew more than all of us combined. It brings that text to light. Uh, and there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. Well, it wouldn't be her. No, it wouldn't be her at all. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So, so I mean, anyway. Holding the body together sometimes depend on the aged, the exactly. ones that have been, you know, the ones who got 85 years behind them. Yeah. Let's take a break. So, Jace, I know you're doing a lot of travel, just like me these days. And, uh, you know, one of the I, I think one of the things I miss the most when I'm on the road, when I'm someplace, is my bed. You know, it's my, my mattress, my, my sheets, controlling of the air, air conditioning. It's all those things that make you uncomfortable. And that's why whether I'm down here at the Southern Lair or I'm back home in West Monroe, I love my Helix mattress. And uh, I know, Jace, you took the quiz uh, yours was medium. Uh, mine's a little bit firmer. Uh, I sleep on my back. You know, you sleep on your side. But this, the beauty of it is you go on their website, you take a little quiz, and they're going to match your mattress perfectly to you. So here's what you do. Go to Helix, H-E-L-I-X, helixsleep.com slash unashamed. You're going to take that little two-minute sleep quiz. They're going to customize your mattress. There's a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. Uh, they'll pick it up, but trust me, you won't want to send it back. HelixSleep.com slash unashamed. Right now, they're offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our unashamed listeners. 
helixsleep.com slash unashamed, $200 off, two free pillows, and a great night's sleep. So the more I found that large scent, the more I thought about it, and everybody had gone out of sight, I thought, you know what? I'm going to try to find this woman a coin, a nice, because I like finding coins anyway. But the large scent I found, I mean, you can see here, they're almost unrecognizable. So I was looking for something more flashy. And, uh, but they were, everybody was trying to find, you know, a, what we try to find in the Civil War relics are a breastplate that, and I found one in my life, which was just, that was before I even knew what I was doing. I actually had it in my junk and I dumped it out on my tailgate, just like just throwing it around. I didn't even know what it was. And one of my buddies, luckily, saw it and was like, he started hollering. This this was a couple of years ago, and I didn't even know what it was. But they were all trying to find those types of things. So they were going, they thought a battle had happened down by the river. And But I thought, you know what? She's been so inspirational. I'm just going to try to find a nice silver coin and give it to her just for being an amazing host and a lover of the Lord. So I had a photographer with me. He was taking pictures. And I said, that's, I think that's the plan. Because they had a, there was a picture inside the house that somebody had taken in the late 1800s of the house. And I, I said, I want to get where they were standing. Because why in the world did they pick that spot? Cause it wasn't like in the front of the house or it wasn't behind the house or it was just on the side. And, uh, I said, somebody stood there to take the picture. So I looked, I took a picture of the picture and I went over there and there was a little ridge. I said, this is where I'm going to hunt. And so first thing I found was something modern piece of pipe. I took a few steps above and I saw some holes that my buddies had, had dug. And I thought, no, this is just a modern junkyard here. Cause they, they said, the son said that there was a house, there used to be an old house here, and they just bulldozed it out into the field. So I thought, yeah, this is probably not good. So I turned around and started going to walk, I was going to walk out of it and try a new plan. Well, my detector went off, and it was loud. And I thought, well, here's another piece of pipe, you know. So I dug it up. When I turned it over, I could see the back of this, and I knew what it was because it had clips like a buckle. And I looked up and I told the photographer, I was like, I, 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 I couldn't even really speak because I was so <laughs> shocked. I was like, I found, I actually, I actually said the wrong thing. I said, I found a, a breastplate that the soldiers used to wear. And then I was like, no, what am I saying? I was like, a buckle. I found a buckle. And so I'll show it to you what it was. I mean, this is like for treasure hunters, says U.S., the Union uh, officers wore those. U.S. But, yeah, that's old. 1860, and Ooh. it's fantastic condition. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. And so I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. I'm like, because that's what they're all looking for. I stayed by the house trying to find the coin. They're all down at the river at the campground looking for one of these, and I found it. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> We're going to say that and for a little reveal prank on my buddies. And so I wrapped it up real good and put it in the vehicle. So I went back. I was like, I still got to find that coin. Went right back out there and found a uh, 1942 Mercury dime in spectacular condition, just a silver coin. So I thought, well, here's her present. So about that time, they all came out. And uh, one of the guys with us was their neighbor who I met last year. He came walking up, and I was like, and then it kind of hit me. I thought, I'm going to, She, this woman is so incredible. I'm going to have to offer her that buckle, too. I mean, it's on her land. And so I told the, the camera guys, like, you know what? If she wants it, I'm going to give it to her. Let me just deal with that right now. I was like, I'm going to give her that <laughs> coin because I'm hoping she'll say, you keep that buckle. And uh, so I go get it, and I give her the coin, and I said, now, I found something spectacular. I said, this is what we are out here looking for. Of course, she, 
she just was overjoyed about the coin because it was silver and it was shiny. And she looked at the buckle and she's like, huh, yeah, that's neat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do anything. Why don't you keep well, that? I, t- I was like, no, this is a this is actually one of the buckles they wore. She's like, you keep that. If that makes you happy, I'm glad you found. I'm so happy you found something you like. I was thinking, oh yes, thank you, Lord. So then, when all my buddies came up about dark, and uh, I was like, y'all find any? Which they found a ton of stuff, but they were, you know, they're looking for buckles and breastplates or whatever. One of them found like a cannonball fragment, which is really extremely cool. And so I showed them what I had, everything except this. And I said, now, I had one thing that had some writing on it, but I just wasn't sure about. It. I didn't want to throw it away. And so I just, they were all gathered in a circle, and I just like, because they all know what this is, you know, this is what we're looking for. Of course, they all started. We we looked like a bunch of junior high, you know, kids <laughs> jumping up, high fiving. Well, she was so excited, and I could tell in that moment because she said, "Well, I've been sitting around all day worried that y'all weren't going to find something that would excite you, and so I am so happy for y'all." And I thought, <laughs> "Yep, this woman is definitely filled with the Holy Spirit because she got she got to share Jesus with us. She was gracious, and now she was." more happy than we were that we found something on her, her you know her land so it was that kind of makes uh, when the, the story of when you uh, when you find jesus you find like a treasure hidden in a field and when you find it you sell everything you got to keep that exactly so it was an um, an amazing scout trip that turned out i found something on my bucket list that I wanted to find in my experiences, you know. I wish we'd have filmed it. We just took pictures of it. But we can, uh, I'll share some of the pictures of these things so that our viewers can see for those that are watching. No, that's good, Jason. That was, and and what was amazing was, is that you weren't even, you weren't doing that for your show. You were just doing that for fun. (laughs) That's why I can talk about it. That's everybody's like, what are you talking about? So, yeah, this was just a scout trip that turned out to be epic in all capital letters. And just the the camaraderie, you know, of hunting and finding all these neat places to go. And I'm definitely thinking about if the show is successful, if y'all will watch and it will become worth something we sh- we should be pursuing, then I'll definitely go back there and do a TV show of some sort there because I, d- I fell in love with people, especially Miss Helen. I mean, I'm telling you, she she is living testimony of the power of God in someone's life just by the way she operated. It was incredible. Our nation but would I like be wise that. to listen to people of the age of people like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We would be but wise to do I like the idea, so. Jace, of your the there's a, the show is the idea is, is treasure is more than what you dig up i mean exactly. it's people you find it's relationships i mean i, I thought about when you were describing miss helen about you know we just there's so many awesome people we just hadn't met them yet i mean they're 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 all across the world and then you, you know we get the opportunity so people say what's the best thing about being well known i was like the people i meet I mean, yeah. I go someplace I've never been, and I meet the most amazing person that I didn't know existed, but now I'll never be able to forget. I mean, that's really yeah. the best part of what we get to do. Well, I told her, I was like, do you mind if I share what happened here on a on our podcast? We have a podcast I was explaining to her. And at first she said, no, I'd rather you not. And I was like, why? She said, well, I don't want somebody to hear about me and come try to rob me. And I said, <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> but so then a couple hours later she said you know i got to thinking about that about you you mentioning me i said look i'm going to be pretty vague i'll just mention your first name you're you know you're in somewhere on the east coast and yeah. i said so good luck with that but she said you know sometimes we have to we have to show courage when we're trying to do the right thing so you, if you feel like that will inspire people that that we met Go ahead and share it. And I was like, well, I appreciate that. You know, so I thought, here's one 85 saying, got to thinking about that. I need to be courageous in this. So I'm telling you, she was amazing. She, she made me tear up about five times during the, the time we were there. Because once I found that buckle, I was good. So we just sat around an old well, her and her son and uh, her neighbor, 
and we just talked till and watched the sun set. I mean, it was it was a beautiful. I got a picture of that that uh, I'll I'll post on there. That because I had this photographer and he was taking pictures and I didn't even realize it. But I was like, boy, I'm glad you really captured this moment. It was what what a day. Let's uh, let's take a break. So one of our uh, sponsors that I'm like super excited about is is a fairly new sponsor called Z Stack, uh, and I've been taking their supplement, which is really really good. And you want you want to take it as soon as possible. You don't want to wait around till you get sick because by then it's too late. What they do is they're going to build up your immune system. Uh, it's got uh, zinc, it's got uh, quercetin, it's got vitamin C, it's got vitamin D. Uh, all of this was formulated by a pretty famous guy now, Dr. Zelenko, and President Trump. Uh, is He's the one that helped him when he was sick uh, with COVID. Really good. It's a great supplement. It's going to help you with any viruses because it's going to build up um, your immune system for the common cold, for the flu, for whatever it is. So you want to get on this uh, as soon as possible. Check them out. The letter ZStackLife.com zstacklife.com slash unashamed enter the promo code unashamed you're going to get a small discount off your first order so zstack.com slash unashamed use the promo code unashamed and build up that immune system very important so we're um we're in uh, First Corinthians, kind of a recap of 12, but Dad, you were telling us something before we started that I thought was interesting, that Paul, anytime, I always say, anytime a writer in the Bible says something three times, we should notice. At you least three. Saying? Yeah. <laughs> At least three times. You know, so and if, and you if they talking. respond uh, about, from reading some information that they had received from you, and some questions arose, and if three times during their letter back to you, and you're an apostle, no doubt a miracle worker who had all the spiritual gifts, and three times he says about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. He says that three times in chapter 10, chapter 11, and chapter going all the way to to over to chapter 15 come back to your senses as you ought which if someone sends me a letter and says Phil you need to come back to your senses as you ought somehow or another I'm convicted by that I'm like and I have an apostle of Jesus doing the talking and uh, come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning for there are some who are ignorant of God, and I say this to your shame. He started that by saying, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. So at Corinth, there was a faction or two or three or four that had gotten together, and they were running with worldly people, and what they are seeing at their meetings doing more harm than good the Apostle Paul is digging down in the middle of that to say, uh, y'all need to y'all need to see what should be your priority in the way you behave inside your meetings because you you some are drunk, some are you know eating all the food you know, and he chastises them about all that. So just in a big picture, if you just step back and look, uh, ignorance is a dangerous thing, as they say, Al. Yep. It made me think of that. Uh, you remember in, in Luke 15, we talk a lot about that parable that Jesus talks about the, the lost sheep and the lost coin and then the lost son. And you remember uh, the the way Kyle Adelman writes it, that he had an aha moment is what he says, because he came to his senses. There was an awareness. And then he humbled himself because he said, you know what? I'm sitting here eating with the pigs. I could be doing way better at home. And then the aha part, the last one is he got up and he and he went home. And so Adelman says that you know, for people, that's what you have to have, awareness, humility, and action. In other words, you have to realize what's going on, but then you have to humble yourself to say, I can change and be different. And then you got to do something about it. Yeah. 
And, you know, which is really to your point, what he's trying to get the Corinthians to do is have an aha moment because there's a bunch of them that they're not humble. They're doing the wrong actions instead of the right actions. And so he's saying, you, you need to, you know, remember what this was all started on. Yep. You know? He was actually having to reaffirm his apostleship to these people because they were saying, you know, you know, Paul, he wants to come in here. And so he was actually defending his apostleship while he was going and his history and background from the time he was converted on the road to Damascus, there were several years in there of teaching and learning and wising up that he spent time somewhere out in that desert over there. He was being trained properly, and God gave him the ability to perform all the way down to raising the dead. I mean, he had a long list of miraculous gifts, a poison snake bit him. That didn't bother him. You know, people falling out of windows and getting killed. He raises them from the dead. I mean, this guy, I mean, he, just his uh, experiences should have been enough for him, but it was a pretty hard sell, uh, Al. Yeah, and there seems to be an undercurrent in, in all through 1 Corinthians, and then it's going to come up even more when we get to 2 Corinthians, about him not being – accepted as an apostle and and i realize why yep. i mean he, he wasn't part of the original group he didn't have to spend the three years with jesus but he was like trying to make the point that you know he, jesus appeared to me remember what he says in 15 he says he appeared to me as one abnormally born meaning yep. you know it came after everybody else but he was like he was trying to tell him look my experiences are still the same i mean i spent the time i saw him and he saw me but I don't know. There's just an undercurrent through this whole letters that somebody in Corinth, they weren't respecting Paul as an apostle. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. He, he mentioned that. He said uh, after 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, he said, his grace to me has not been without a, an effect. He said, no, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. So he's just letting them know, look, I, I, I've, I've, I've been climbing, climbing the hill, and it's been a tough go all the way. But God's right. been with me the whole time. So what a change in behavior on behalf of a man trying to get it into the, uh, the Corinthians' mind. Yeah, and we were talking exactly. about spirit, spiritual gifts. And one of the things that I, I don't know that we necessarily, when we, we first kind of went through chapter 12, was that the Holy Spirit, Jace mentioned this, the Holy Spirit is the architect of the gifting. So, which really takes out the sort of human, you know, pride aspect because it's not coming from you anyway. I mean, whatever these gifts are that they're listed right. here. And, and so we think about it, you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Remember, he was poured out in Acts 2, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He was promised in John 14 through 16. And then there are gifts that come from him, which you read about here in 1 Corinthians 12 and also Romans 12. But then there's also fruit that he bears out in every Christian's life that we read about in Galatians 5. So it's really interesting. He almost has three different roles that, you know, ever since the spirit era began and on the day of Pentecost that, that we experience. And so this is just one aspect of it that we're reading about in 1 Corinthians 12. Yeah. The sw switchover comes with uh, the end of chapter 12 you know, when he said, are, are all apostles? And the understood answer is no. All, are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Do all work miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Do all speak in tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. Then he says this, but eagerly desire the greater gifts. Y'all are thinking these miraculous things that you're able to do via God's spirit. And you're all jockeying for position on who, who now do somebody else when you come together and it's cr created mayhem. And he ends it up by saying, eager desire of the greater gifts. And now I will show you the most excellent way. And he went from the, the, the miraculous to love, hope, faith, hope, and love. He said, those three are more important than all of what you're doing with these miraculous gifts. because And y'all are factions and envy among you, and you're all trying to, to beat one another out in the race to 
Hooten performed the biggest miracle this morning, and he ends it up by saying, there's a love problem here. Yeah. So he goes through this thing about faith, hope, and love, and uh, these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is, is love. So that's well, you the point got, he's making in yeah. his letter in his response to, a, in a lot of ways, some very unlearned and unschooled people in the faith. Yeah. You got me to thinking, hang on, though. Hang on, Jase. If you let's, let's take Jase. Let's take a break. <clears throat> you got me to thinking. So if you go back and look at First Corinthians eight one, he said about the sacrifice, food sacrifice to idols that they were, you know, sacrificing and then to demons, and then they're like, "What do you do with the food?" But he says, "We know that we all possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up." But love builds up, yep. which I'm reading this because he's fixing to call them ignorant. Mm -hmm. So he's like, what you think you know, you may not know. Because he says, the man who thinks he knows something does not yet know as he ought to know. But the man who loves God is known by God, which is an interesting thing. I, I pointed this verse out a few times because God knowing you is more important than you knowing God. Yep. I mean, when you when you go down that trail, you're going to be more inspired and it's going to be more life-changing because when you look at 1 Corinthians 10, 1, to your point, he said, I don't want you to be ignorant that our forefathers were all under the cloud and they passed through the sea. So then he goes on to say in verse 3, they ate the same spiritual food and drank the spiritual drink and the rock that accompanied them and that rock was Christ. He said, what was the point? The point was that God was giving the gifts. They're hung up on the gifts instead of who's providing the gifts. That is correct. It goes yeah. back to the known by God. So then when he gets to 1 Corinthians 12 in verse 1, now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I don't want you to be ignorant, which now makes sense because his point is you're not acknowledging the one who's giving the gifts, the That's gift right. giver, which he's going to get to love because God is love. We have, you know, First John 4 that says that. But then I noticed another obscure passage in chapter 14, because then when we got into what their practical problems were in showing off the gifts that God had given them, not God had given them, but like, ooh, look what I, look at me, look what I have, and all the problems around that. Some translations in verse 38 of 14, you know, the NIV says ignore. If he ignores this, he himself will be ignored. But I noticed when I looked this up, some translation says, but if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. So when you read back to what, he, what led to him saying that in verse 36, it says, did the word of God originate with you? And, and that, that's the whole problem here. They, they've elevated themselves where God should be. He's, he's the one providing the gift. The Holy Spirit is providing the gift for what? To love people, to share Jesus with other people, to use all these gifts as one body to point to the head who's in control. You know, God's forever family, the relationships. Just like speaking it. in the various languages, what a gift that you could talk to the known world at that time, Al. You had the power with the Spirit's help to speak in their language and preach the gospel to them at the drop of a hat. You're talking about a great gift and look at what they were doing with it and you're like, you're missing the point here. Well, they're saying, look at what I can do. Yeah. But what should be happening is you should be doing that as a sign, and we'll get into this later. So unbelievers will say, there must be a God. There is a God. And then when they say, oh, we're interested, then tell us how good God is. They're like, no, we're going to tell you how awesome I am <laughs> that God has chosen me to unveil this gift that you're now listening to. I think <laughs> in, in that moment is what the problem was. And he's saying, I don't want you to be ignorant because yep. you're being really ignorant of, of you know what? Me. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you think somehow... <laughs> This is all about you, like you're more special. And look, you just think about the temptation of humanity, what causes wars and conflict and all. One of the common 
things that cause that is that people think they're better than other people. And Paul identified the source about spiritual gifts, brothers. I do not want you to be ignorant. Now listen to what leads to this ignorance they have. You know that when you were pagans, so they had been converted, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to dumb idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who's speaking by the Spirit of God said Jesus is cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There's different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There's different kinds of services, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God. Yeah. Works all of them, in all men. So he just, that's his, his logic. Y'all came out of some tough backgrounds, but you, you, you've, you've missed where all this is coming from, the power of it all. And yeah. it's God in you through the Spirit, and you, 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 you're, 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 you're being ignorant about this. Yeah. Well, you just think about, you fast forward to today and all the modern churches. There's been more divisions and bitterness and people hollering at each other, and I'm moving down the street, over how these gifts or our belief on how, who has the gifts and when they and should if, be if revealed. If you can't do and, what I, I, I do, you're and out. I'm, and I'm like, we, we're we still seeing this. Because you think, well, this was written a couple thousand year, years ago. This doesn't happen. No. People are still not showing love over the same issues. Somebody's like, well, I have this gift. Because when we get to 13, which is a tricky verse, that I guess we'll probably devote a whole podcast to about, you know, whether these things are still going on, every one of these gifts in the full capacity like they were then. But I'll tell you this, no matter whether they are or not, it, it, the point is make sure you realize that God is providing all this and what it's for. It's for our appreciation and humility towards God and our love for other people. I mean, that, that, that's what this is for. If you miss that 2,000 years ago or you miss it now, you missed it. Yep. So <clears throat> let's take a break. So a couple of things. Dad, you, you read that verse, dumb, idol. And he, by that, it doesn't mean dumb like we use the word. He's talking about an idol can't speak. You know, God that's speaks. Right. You know, the, the yep. Christ is the word. And so we talk about the spirit speaking through people. And so when you miss that, if you follow an idol, they're dumb. They can't speak to you. It's just, it's it's there. It's made out of something that humans made and it can't do anything. I can see you know? how, how that could creep in to the church. You know, it's interesting on in 1 Corinthians 14, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. I can, I can go worldwide with no problem and preach the gospel to whomever I'm preaching to and they understand what I'm saying because I'm telling them in their language. He said, yep. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But in the church, when there's nobody there that's that I need to speak their language to, in the church, I'd rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue he said, brothers, stop thinking like children. In regard to evil, be infants. But in your thinking, be adults. Well, that's a pretty strong statement to say, you've taken these gifts and it's out of hand and it's not right. You're, yeah. missing, you're missing the ones who's given you the gifts and you're not taking advantage of that. And you're all trying to outdo one another on who, 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 who knows how many tongues and who can do the most and you're you're vying for a position and you're you're jumping up in the middle of the congregation and there's not any visitors there that even speak in the language you're hollering about the spirits yeah. enable them to preach the, the gospel in their language but but how they're sitting there and there's not any foreigners in the house i mean yeah. look only humans only <laughs> humans can find a way to take the awesomeness, the intellect, the wisdom, the grace, the power of God and make it about them man, for an hour Oh yeah, in a, in a service. Oh, I mean, it, it's pretty incredible. Look, as a duck call builder, and Phil, I learned it from you, I think it's funny when he gets to 14.7 and he said, even in the case of lifeless things, 
that make sounds, such as the flute or harp. How will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? And again, I think this was intended for humor, but that's just my opinion. If the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? I mean, I'll just immediately go to here's the trumpet come out. You know, we're fixed to freedom, you know, as Mel Gibson going in front. And then it's just <laughs> looking around. <laughs> what? What was but what, my, my, my point is God designed this. Even the things we use that that are lifeless, he He's the one that created this whole house, the planet Earth, and all the things that make sounds, and even the lifeless thing. That's why I love that Hebrews 3, 4, where it says every house is built by someone, and God is the builder of everything. I mean, you see God, even from unbelievers, just in their talents and what they can do with a piano and just all these things that God has instituted. But he's saying, but they're for a use to to put you back to me to say oh look at all this creation and that goes back to the fundamental truth of how we got here because some everyone has to ask themselves the gifts that weren't, question. weren't weren't giving for the chaos that y'all have brought exactly. upon you. It, it's just like the way you know when it, when it comes down to how we got here you've got two choices either some random explosion of things there's no explanation for on how they existed, blew up and provided ke- provided perfect chemistry on a planet called Earth with all these things, lifeless and life, where they can be used in this in this harmonious way, which is just crazy to me. Or there was an intelligent design to that. There still could have been an explosion by the intelligent designer that if you had someone that is all wise and all powerful and has the ability to create matter and he could make an explosion work in harmony but even if he did if there was no explosion somehow you have to say was this done on purpose by an intellectual being just the existence of everything life and non-life or was it just a random explosion that produced chemistry but based on my gut feeling and the amount of things that i have blown up in my life i've never seen something blow up to be something perfect yeah it's just the complete opposite yep and i think that's kind of his point when you take god out as the gift giver and the life giver what do you got you got you got chaos then and it's about you making sounds even in this case like speaking in tongue and they were like well you know we're gonna speak in an angelic tongue well how they know what an angelic tongue was yeah the apostle paul makes the point follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts especially the gift of prophecy for anyone who speaks in a tongue a foreign language does not speak to men but to god Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. But, Phil, that's what they say even today. They're like, we're speaking in an unknown tongue. Yep. And that's what he was chastising them for. Yep. But I'm saying even today, there are people saying, I'm not sure what I'm speaking. It's an unknown tongue. And And the problem is... The problem is what you originally said, Jay, is if if it's unknown, if we can't know it, it doesn't do us any good. I mean, we're known to exactly. God. Where, you know, it's, where is it's faith, what we know. hope, and love? <laughs> yeah, in God. That's why I went back and did it the way I did. I mean, everybody thinks they know something, and then you do something that you don't know, and you're saying, oh, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm speaking in an unknown something. Yep. Well, how do you know something that's unknown? Yep. Well, he speaks mysteries with his spirit, but everyone who prophesies, just stick to prophecy, the word of God, speaks to men, and here's what happens, for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. <clears throat> the ones who speak in tongues edifies themselves, but he who prophesies edifies the church. 
I'd like to have one of you speak in tongues, but I'd rather have you prophesy. You need well, to. and then he went on to say what you said earlier. Then he said, I mean, because he spent a whole chapter on love that we've skipped over that we'll have to go backwards to. But are you, are you showing this love? Are you, do you have faith and hope, and are you, are you showing love? And I would rather you speak five intelligible words. Yeah. Just give me Be, five. Yeah. I mean, pick five words that people can understand, and how about try that? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, what, what, what an exhortation. I mean, it's like if you don't think they're immature, because that's something I would tell my kid. I'm like, look, just give me one sentence that makes sense right now. Yeah. Let's do it <laughs> in right. five words. That's why by the time you get to 1 Corinthians 15, he said, let me remind you of the gospel I preached to you for, so you don't forget here. And he brings them back to reality. You know, he said, I preached to you. You've taken your stand on it. By this gospel, you're saved. You need to hold on to what I've told you or you're, you believe in vain. You know, then the death of Jesus, his burial and resurrection. And he ties it all together. And that was their problem. <coughs> and to a pretty good extent, it's still Yeah, which is... Is the is the ultimate end uh, to the book, which we'll get to. Um, we're out of time, but in our overtime segment, I want to talk about that, Jason. I want to talk about the the purpose of why we still assemble together, and unfortunately, how many people miss that. The same problems that are going on here, you know, all these thousands of years ago, still go on today, which is unfortunate. So yep. let's uh, we'll talk about that in the overtime. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.